can't believe I'm smiling at my house on fire. <laughs> I can't believe I'm smiling that my house is on fire. That's just, that's classic. Hey, this video is for the 82 as of last count backers on Kickstarter. This video is for you. I just checked with the factory. So far, the, the early order that I got is has hit the United States. It's in customs, so everything is on track. We're pretty excited. Uh, that means that there is some preparation that I need you to do to get ready to receive your bot. Now remember, I don't sell the projector, but what I am gonna do is help get you ready. There's a lot of different things to consider. I'm gonna walk you through that tonight. Things like distance, brightness, cost, and other factors to take into consideration. We'll figure that out so you can either get the really top of the line or the bare bones and make it work. So to cover all the basics to get you ready for your projector, we're gonna show you on this house that I found recently. These people didn't know me from Adam. I just saw their house, I love the decorations, and I knocked on their door and says, hey, can I Illumabot your house? And after some convincing and showing them some video, what the heck that means, they said yes. So right now, my team's over here. We're, we're uh, putting a few projectors on the house. We're gonna do some cool prompts on it and show you that. But along the way, I'm gonna teach you what to look for to get your projectors ready. Let's go. Okay, so the number one consideration when choosing a projector for your Illumabot is distance. How far away from the house can your projector be? So in some cases, when you've got a really big yard, you've got plenty of space, you can use what's called a standard projector. It's what I have in my yard, I got plenty of room, I cover it with pine straw, but this is a standard throw projector. In other cases, you may not have a lot of space between your house and where you need to put the projector. In those situations, you're gonna to wanna to use something like this called a short throw projector. So in order to figure out what kind of projector you need, we need to talk about a thing called throw ratio. And basically that means for every foot of width of your house, how many feet away do you need your projector to be? So to figure all that out, let's use our highly technical model down here to talk about throw ratio. So let's start simple. If I had a throw ratio projector of one to one, that means if my house is 20 feet wide, then I could use a projector that is 20 feet away. 20 feet times one, 20. A standard throw projector like we saw earlier, those usually have a 1.2 to 2.0. Let's just say 1.5 to be easy. If I had a projector like that, that means for 20 feet of distance, times 1.5, right? My projector would need to be 30 feet away to cover the surface that I need. But let's say I don't have that kind of distance and I need to get it really up close. In that case, I'm gonna use something called a short throw projector. A short throw projector usually has a ratio of around 0.5 or something like that. So let's do the math. If I had a house that is 20 feet wide times 0.5, then my projector only needs to be 10 feet away. And that's what you use to calculate. When we're shopping for projectors, we just pay attention to the thing called throw ratio, and that will determine which projector we should get. So where do you find this tricky little throw ratio? So usually anywhere you're buying a projector, there'll be specifications. Look in the specifications for where it says throw ratio. Sometimes they're not listed. And so the easy trick that I do is I just copy and paste the model number of the projector in a website called Projector Central. I love this place, they're great guys. They have like super great stats on every single projector out there. If you're in a situation where your house is in pitch black, you're in great shape. You can use a lower powered projector. However, if you're in situations where you need to deal with this, street lights, neighborhood lights, bright ambient light, well, you're gonna have to get a brighter projector. How much brightness should your projector have, right? So some projectors are great. They're great, they're cheap, they're 59 bucks or whatever else or whatever, but they're not very bright. They're great for small projects, for little decorations, for doing small rooms and things like that, but they're not gonna light your house. You're gonna need something at minimum around 3,000 lumens or higher to really make that pop on your house. Anything lower and it's just, it's just not gonna have the pop you want. So keep that in mind. So one other consideration you're gonna wanna have is if you're doing your projectors outdoor, you're gonna to wanna to protect them and you're gonna to wanna to probably do that in some form of an enclosure. There's some basic elements to an enclosure. You can DIY it all day long, it's a lot cheaper. 
We sell them, of course, if you don't want to go through all that. Obviously, you got to have the light go through. So some kind of glass up front. I use plexiglass. It's cheap. It's just efficient. But you do lose some brightness through a plexiglass, just a, just a smidge. So keep that in mind. They make some professional glass. You can buy that stuff as well. But I use plexiglass. Heat. It gets freaking hot in here, and you're going to have to dissipate that heat. What I use is just a little barbecue blower fan right here. We've got a squirrel cage fan, exhaust fan to pull the heat out, uh, a temperature sensor outlet. So it's gonna notice once the temperature gets too high, it's gonna kick that fan on and start pulling air out. If you notice out of the bottom, we've got a hole straight up in the bottom that we'll put a, a grate on. And uh, that way we just eject that hot air straight out. Got a surge protector down here because we're gonna have the projector plugged in thermostatic control plugged in, and we also have our Illumibot plugged in. Uh, there is a hole right here on the bottom. That's so that we can bring the, the power cable that we ran over here, runs underneath, comes up inside the box. Drilled a bunch of holes on the side, probably gonna drill some more just so we can pull cold air in on this side, uh, let it pass through the projector, and then suck all the hot air, because that's the hot exhaust side right there. Take it and send it straight out of the box, try to control that temperature, keep it as cool as possible. Security. Right, so some of these, this is just a modified toolbox. You can put a padlock on here. Uh, some of mine I bury in concrete. I put four by four post. I screw it in there. So if you're gonna steal it, you're gonna have to work for it. And in some installations, we've even done vibration sensors. So if anything moves in here that shouldn't be moving, your phone goes off. So lots of different ways you can protect and do, but you need to have an enclosure if you're gonna have this outdoor in the heat. One other thing I didn't talk about is I'm in South Mississippi, so I'm all about the heat. But up north, sometimes y'all have to deal with the cold and some of these projectors don't work well in the cold. I don't know how that works, but that may be a consideration for you. Look it up on the internet. I'm just gonna walk around, literally just moving the projector around, finding the optimal spot. That's the easiest way to do it. You need to be dark for that. Your projections don't always have to be square with the house. Sometimes you can project from an angle and it just works. There's old school bulb projectors, LED projectors, laser projectors, all kinds of technology we can spend way too much time talking about. But I think things really boil down to cost. What can you afford? What are you willing to put on your house? In this situation, we have on the left a $2,000 laser projector and on the right a $60 used old school bulb projector from eBay. On my house, I have four of these NEC P401W standard throw projectors that I got on eBay. In conclusion, take time to carefully plan out your projector placement, calculate that throw ratio to determine whether you need a standard throw or a short throw projector, and aim for the highest lumen projector your budget allows. Be sure to consider how you're going to protect your equipment and explore those online options to find the best deals. If you need help along the way, don't hesitate to reach out to our team. We are here to help you make the right choice. Projection mapping is a blast, and with AI, the possibilities are endless. I cannot wait to see the amazing creations you'll come up with. I can't believe I'm smiling at my house on fire. <laughs> right? <laughs> Dude, I'm totally gonna put that. That'll be like the intro hook. Uh. And then we exit with right here, and so that's your front and your back. That's funny. Yeah, see? Oh, wow.